Um, uh, we are going to do an English lesson this morning about animals and a few of you in the chat uh, were asking um, if we are going to look at domestic animals uh, or pets. Uh, we're going to look at not just animals uh, but we're going to look at a lot of the words and phrases that you would use when you're talking about animals. Um, I always like to make this uh, a little more uh, than a vocabulary lesson. I like to make it uh, let me just check my uh, audio here, folks. Yes. I like to make this always more than just a vocabulary lesson. So uh, we're going to talk about animals this morning uh, or this afternoon, wherever, whatever the time is where you are. Uh, you can see I put a squirrel, one of the hardest animal names in English uh, to say on here. Um, but that is a squirrel. Squirrel. Try, try to say that one out loud right now. Um, but I just want to stop for a minute and say hi to everybody. I know Beata's here. She was asking a question earlier. Uh, Beryl Wilson is here. Maria, Rachel, um, Nihang Chung Ti is here. Cab is here. Um, just lots of people. Robeha, Robeba is here. I know some of you find it fun when I try to pronounce your names. Uh, Ix is here. Tejman is here. Hello, Tejman. Lolly is here. And Karen, hi guys. Uh, and Jack is here. And a few other people coming in. Again, we'll get started uh, in just a couple seconds. We're here to talk about animals, uh, some animal vocabulary, some uh, pronunciation, some phrases and idioms with animals in them. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll just get started. Um, so, we'll start simple. We'll start with pets. So pets are animals that people keep in their homes. Um, the, most or the two most common pets in Canada and I think around the world are either dogs or cats. Um, we ourselves have a few cats at home uh, and we have one dog. You have all met him uh, if you've watched the farm live stream, uh, especially two weeks ago when he jumped in front of the camera. But um, quite often in a lot of places in the world, uh, people have a pet dog or they have a pet cat. And that's how we say it. You would say, you know, I have a pet dog. His name is Oscar or I have two pet cats. Um, and I know Uu, I'm not sure if Uu's here, but Uu has pets for sure. I do want to shout out to Judith and to Vinicius who weren't able to come to the live stream, but uh, I did want to say hi to them because they're going to watch this tomorrow. Um, if you have, oh, by the way, there's other pets besides cats and dogs. Some people have fish, some people have rabbits. Uh, some people have uh, mice or snakes. I don't like any of those pets, but um, I'm not planning to spend a lot of time talking about all the different kinds of pets, but more to talk about things like if you have a pet, you probably got your pet from a friend or you might have bought your pet at a pet store. Uh, so a pet store is a store that specializes in selling pets as well as all of the things you need to take care of your pet, okay? So um, I'm not sure how things are around the world. I'm going to assume they're very similar, but um, you uh, generally, when you need some food for your pet, you go to the pet store uh, and that's where you would buy it. Um, we have a few people uh, jumping in. We have Lange is here, Nguyen is here. Hi guys, Hector's here. Lost in SM is here. Uu is here. I thought you would be here, Uu. I think Uu has cats, if I remember properly. Daniela is here. She says, I like your dog, Oscar, and your cats. Uh, Cab says, we have five dogs in the Philippines, but it's quite difficult uh, to keep one here in Dubai. Um, um, I have a kitten. Oh, Lolly has a kitten. Very cool. Dave has two cats. Elena says, are you a dog person or a cat person? So that's how in English we ask, um, there's really two kinds of pet people. There's dog people and there's cat people. So we will actually ask people, hey, are you a dog person or a cat person? And it, and it means which do you like best? I, I don't know. I think I kind of go back and forth. I think right now I'm a dog person. I'm not sure. Um, oh, here's our first idiom. Uh, some of you know this one. It is one of the first phrases you learn in English. Um, if it is raining outside really, really hard, um, if the rain is, um, there's another idiom coming down in buckets. So if it is pouring rain, 
uh, will often say that it's raining cats and dogs. Um, I, I know you don't need to learn this one. I think it is probably the most common idiom uh, that new English learners learn. But if, if it is raining really hard, we say it's raining cats and dogs. I've never actually seen cats and dogs come down with the rain. Um, hey, if you have a pet, you need to buy pet food. So it comes in cans or bags. Sometimes you go and buy a bag of dog food, uh, a bag of, this actually looks like a bear. We don't keep bears as pets, but um, you'll have a dog bowl or a, a cat bowl. Um, but whatever your animal is, so if you have rabbits, you would say that you're buying rabbit food. Uh, so all of the food that we feed to animals, we call, um, we use, just use the English word food. So pet food, uh, dog food, cat food, rabbit food. I don't know if we say snake food. We do say fish food though. You go and buy some food for your fish. So um, I'm gonna just click something down here. Hello to the rest of the people joining. We got a few people in here today. So if you have a pet, uh, in English, we say that you are the owner of that pet. Okay, so the same way that you own a car, so I own a van, um, you would say that you own your pet. So sometimes when you see pets at the park, you see them walking with their owner. So oftentimes dog owners will walk their dog at the park. So um, this is a dog, obviously, and this is the dog's owner. Um, you can tell it's the dog's owner because I think this dog really loves their owner right now. So we use the same word that we would use to own objects. Like I own a computer, I own a van, I also own a dog. It sounds kind of funny, but that's, that is how we say it. Um, next idiom, let the cat out of the bag. So what this means is if, if you told me a secret and you said, uh, don't tell, don't tell Jen, but um, I can't think of a secret. But if you told me a secret and then I went and told the secret to someone else, I would have let the cat out of the bag. So this means um, when you know something that's supposed to be secret and then you tell someone else about it. So um, it's not nice to let the cat out of the bag, especially if you're planning a surprise party for someone and then you accidentally tell the person um, that you're going to have a party for them. So, um, so it's kind of funny. So animals are either male or female. They're either a boy or a girl. But when we're asking someone about their pet, we often say, um, oh, is your dog a he or a she? Um, and it sounds kind of funny. You could say, is your dog male or female? Uh, you could say, is your dog a boy or a girl? But you can also... <laughs> I think improperly use he and she. You could say, is your dog a he or a she? And then you could say, oh, he's a he. <laughs> so, and people often get this confused. Sometimes you will have a dog who is a she, it's a girl dog, uh, and people will think it's uh, a he or a boy dog. So, when, uh, yeah, yeah uh, when you let the cat out of the bag, you, you reveal a secret. That's excellent, Lolly. That's, that's good. Uh, and Lost says that's why he never tells anyone uh, about his secrets. That's a good plan. That's the best way uh, to keep your secrets. Just, uh, just don't tell anyone about them. Um, when animals um, are abandoned by their owners or when they run away, we call them a stray. So these are stray cats, and you can put the word stray uh, in front of the type of animal as well. So you have stray dogs. Those are dogs that just live in town and they have no owner. Uh, you can have stray cats. These are cats that just, when you go downtown, maybe there's a few stray cats downtown. Um, and in Canada, this can become a problem because uh, stray cats sometimes uh, breed with each other and you have more cats that have no owners. So no one's taking care of them. So we call those strays. Um, so if there are a lot of strays in a town, they'll end up at what we would call the pound or an animal shelter. So in Canada, we used to call them dog pounds, but I think more and more we call them animal shelters. 
Um, but when an, an animal is abandoned, that means when the owner just lets their animal go and doesn't take care of them anymore. Uh, when we have a lot of stray animals, uh, they end up in an animal shelter. So um, in Canada, we try to take care of our stray animals, um, but sometimes there's uh, just too many uh, dogs and cats that are strays. I think other countries have the similar pro have a similar problem where there's just a lot of uh, stray dogs or stray cats in your towns or cities. Um, we have the same problem in Canada. Uh, one sec. I'm still here. The doctor who takes care of animals uh, is called a veterinarian. This is a very challenging word uh, for some of you to pronounce. Um, you want to sound it out, but we actually really smush this part together. So we say veterinarian. If you have a hard time saying veterinarian though, just say vet. So the first three letters, if you just say, I'm taking my dog to the vet, there, I'm covering it properly now. Um, um, then you are taking your dog to someone who will give your, um, who will give your dog care, who's uh, trained as a doctor of veterinary medicine uh, and is able to, you know, give your dog needles and those kinds of things. So if you can't say veterinarian, then just say vet. It's a lot, it's a lot easier that way. So that was pets. Um, I'm going to be talking about three different kinds of animals this morning. Uh, again, for those of you that have just joined, uh, we're talking about animals, um, but more than just a simple vocabulary lesson. We're kind of looking at uh, some of the uh, words and phrases around animals and then a few idioms uh, with animals as well. So um, I just want to stop and say hi to Grace and Rachel and Vurong and Tico's here, Jack Nien, Julie Pan, Almaturi is here, Lulu is here, um, Nelson is here, I'm just scrolling back, Danny is here, Uzula is here, Saba, Aya, hi everybody, Bonnie Pang is here. I know I'm missing some names when I say hi to people, I'm sorry about that. The second kind of animal we're going to talk about, we either call farm animals or livestock. So these two words are interchangeable. So farm animals is a very common term, you know, on a farm you will find lots of farm animals, but we also use the word livestock. So um, someone might have like different kinds of livestock on their farm. Um, guess what these are, I'll tell you in a sec. <laughs> so one of the most common kinds of animals around the world uh, are sheep. So uh, actually Jen and I have sheep at home. Um, what we have sheep for is there the sheep have wool. One of the primary uses of sheep is wool. Uh, and then we do have a meat that we call lamb or mutton. So sheep, very common farm animal. I'm gonna go through these quickly. Cows, so there's two kinds of cows in general. There's cows that we have because we want milk. And so we milk the cows. I see lost in SM is saying moo. <laughs> and then uh, we have cows that we raise for beef um, because we'd like to eat beef. Um, we also have pigs. Um, pigs are an interesting animal. Uh, they're kind of a dirty animal. Um, I don't really like pigs. I hope that's okay. Uh, is it okay that there's certain kinds of animals uh, that I don't like? I don't really like pigs, but pigs, another type of farm animal. Uh, and I have two idioms for pigs uh, or English phrases. In English, when you eat a lot of food, like if I sit down at a meal and I just eat all kinds of food, I really pig out. So you could say, oh, I, was, I went to my mom's for, a, for a supper yesterday and I really pigged out. Um, it means you ate too much, really. Uh, that's what it means. Um, We also have to hog something. So if, for instance, uh, I'm a kid and I have a whole bunch of toys and my friend comes over to play with me, but I don't let him play with my toys. I take all my toys. We would say that I am hogging my toys. So we don't want people to hog things. Um, it means that they're not sharing. So. Those are two little pig idioms. Hi, Abraham. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get to that yet. Uh, busy man. I'm a busy man sometimes. 
Uh, Urzula says, I love animals. I have five cats, two dogs, two chickens. Very cool. Hi to whoever is saying hi from Japan. Very cool that you're here. Oh, cattle. So what is it? What does the word cattle mean? So cows and cattle are the same thing. You could say I have a lot of cows or you could say I have a lot of cattle. It's the same. It's the same word. Um, Law says he loves pigs. Eric says hello to everyone. Hello, Eric. Um, there's another idiom, when pigs fly, which means never, by the way, because pigs can't fly. Um, we also have chickens. So we keep chickens on farms um, for two reasons, either because we like to eat chicken or because uh, they lay eggs. Okay, so those are, oh wait, I have one more farm animal. Wait, I have two more farm animals, goats. Probably one of the most common animals in the entire world uh, is the goat. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds of goats. And then as well, uh, we have horses. So horses are not as popular anymore as they used to be hundreds of years ago. So now, of course, on farms we have tractors. So we don't need to use horses uh, to pull equipment to work the fields. Um, so horses have really become something that rich people have or people that love horses. Sorry, I shouldn't say just rich people, but uh, horses are no longer needed in many parts of the world to operate a farm. Um, so we don't ride horses anymore because we have cars. We don't hitch up the wagon and take the wagon to town with the horse. Um, so horses have really become something where um, the biggest industry that supports horses uh, would be like horse racing. So people still like to race horses. Uh, people still like to ride horses for pleasure. So they like to just have a horse so they can go for a horse ride. Uh, when you ride a horse, uh, you put a saddle on the horse. Um, I think one of the reasons there are still so many horses in the world is because they are a very beautiful animal. Um, so horses still you don't see very many on the farm i will tell you though that my grandfather when i was a kid my grandfather and grandmother had a farm and they had a horse um, and i can still um, go and look in a photo album there are pictures of uh, of my grandpa and his really big horse he loved horses i think he grew up in the era in the time when everyone still used horses so um, we do have a phrase using horse, which is horsing around. So this is the best description of horsing around is when uh, if you have a bunch of kids and they're really excited and they're loud and they're laughing and they're pushing each other and they're just having fun, we call that horsing around. Um, sometimes parents can be heard saying, stop horsing around, which means, you know, the kids are getting too loud. Um, but when people horse around, it just means that they're being loud and laughing, uh, maybe pushing and shoving each other a little bit, uh, but more for fun. They're not being mean, they're just horsing around. Um, so question here, um, hold your horses. Yes, that means to wait, that's great. Um, lost would like a horse. <laughs> Abraham says to feel like a fish out of water. Yeah, it means to be uncomfortable, right? Um, fish are very comfortable in water. Fish like being in water. But when you're like a fish out of water, it means you're in a situation uh, that you don't like. Um, Alog says tamed animal. So a tame animal is like a pet or a farm animal. They are animals that like to be around humans. So they like to be around us. But there are also wild animals, which we'll look at in a sec, which are not tame. Um, so when an animal is tame, it means with pets, they like it if we scratch, pet them, and we scratch their ears. Um, with farm animals, it means they're not scared of humans. They're relatively tame. So um, Lolly says, hold your horses. Yes. Um, Varong says, I rarely see horses in my area. Yeah, they're pretty rare. There's not a lot of horses uh, in the world anymore uh, on farms. If you go to... Uh, the fair or the racetrack, or if you go to a horse farm, uh, you'll probably see some. So farm animals live where? They live on a farm. And generally farm animals live in a barn. 
So this type of building, and there are many different styles around the world, uh, is called a barn. So if you go to a farm, you can't see it very well on this one, but there is probably a farmhouse. Yeah, there's not one in this picture. A barn and a farmhouse. So the barn is where generally animals live. Um, if you are in a really, really warm country, you might not have barns. You might just have like an outdoor shelter um, for your animals. Um, inside of a barn, you usually have pens. So a pen is an area, there's a small uh, calf in here, that's a baby cow. So a pen is a place where you would keep an animal. Um, you guys know pen, like this is a pen, right? But it actually has two meanings. We also keep animals in pens. Um, and it's nice when you keep animals in pens if they are large and spacious and give them lots of room. When animals that eat grass go outside, usually they are in a type of field that's called a pasture. So this is a large field of grass. Here we have sheep on the pasture. You can also have cows on a pasture. You can even have, in Canada, we even now have some chickens and pigs that go out on pasture because people want their food to be a little more natural. But usually a pasture has cows or sheep and goats uh, would go on pasture. Um, <laughs> this is not me, but this is what a farmer looks like. Uh, for those of you that uh, know me a bit better, you know that I do live on a farm. So this man is a farmer. I think he's just spreading out some food for his animals to eat. Um, it might be, um, I'm not sure if it's food, it might be fertilizer, I'm not sure. But here is a farmer, a person who lives on a farm and earns their living, living on a farm. Um, Beryl Wilson says, horses have been used in a kind of therapy, ecotherapy. So more and more animals are being used to help people feel better about themselves. So dogs, um, cats, horses, all of these animals are helpful. Um, and let's see here, anyone knows the video game Heyday? No, I have not played that. But my kids play Farming Simulator. They like that game. Um, Uu says, I don't have a farm, but I love animals. That's very cool. Um, Pen is Chuang Ngura in Vietnamese. I probably said that wrong. And Pasan is here. Hello, Pasan. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, last kind of animal, wild animals. So we have pets, we have farm animals, and then we have wild animals. And wild animals live uh, away from humans, and they live in a bunch of different places. So we could say that they live in the wilderness, so wilderness is a, is a challenging word to say. We also say that they live in the wild. Um, so you could say that, um, you know, foxes and wolves in Canada, they live in the wild. You could also say they live in the wilderness. Um, I didn't add, um, yeah, we have the forest, but we also have the jungle. The forest, the jungle, the savanna. There's all kinds of places that we would call uh, out in the wild. So animals who are wild animals are not tame. Thanks for bringing that up. I forgot who brought that up. Um, but they live in the wilderness, they live in the wild, they live in the forest, or they live in the jungle. Um, so they also though, um, Nelson says, I live in a country house and have four, uh, four dogs, two cats, um, one gen and into the forest, a lot of wild animals. Oh, if you go into the forest, there's a lot of wild animals, yes. You can also see wild animals at a zoo. So a zoo is a place where um, we go and we get wild animals and we put them in cages or pens. Uh, and you can come to the zoo if you want to see them. Um, not sure what I think about zoos, but uh, um, yeah. You can go to the zoo if you want to see animals. I was going to say something else about the zoo, but I can't remember what it was called. Um, Passan says, what's the difference between jungle and forest? Uh, just temperature and amount of rain. So in Canada, we have forests. If you go far enough south, eventually you have jungle, which is just, uh, I think, a lot more rain and a, a lot more trees. 
Um, we also have a kind of zoo uh, called a petting zoo. So a petting zoo usually has animals where it's safe to pet them. So it's safe to, you know, if you see a dog and you pet them on the head. So a petting zoo usually has goats, it usually has sheep, it has a lot of farm animals, but it can also have some other wild animals. But uh, a petting zoo is a place where people go uh, if they want to see something more than a dog or a cat, they'll, uh, they'll go to a petting zoo. So um, a lot of people don't like zoos. You know, I really, I'm not sure about zoos anymore because it really seems, it just seems mean to take an animal and then bring it to another country and, uh, and put it in a zoo. But at the same time, I know my kids liked going to the zoo when we went, so I don't know. I need to think about zoos a bit more and whether uh, I like them or not. Um, I heard you pronounce animals who. Why didn't you say that or which? Which was correct. Animals who live in the jungle, animals that live in the jungle, animals who eat a lot of food, animals that eat a lot of food. You can use both, Abraham. You can totally use both. So. Sometimes we talk about animals as if they're people. So uh, it's not incorrect. Like I could say, um, there are a lot of animals who live in the jungle. And I could say, there are a lot of animals that live in the jungle. Both totally correct. You can use both. Great question. Um, Daniela says, I envy you having a farm, although I know it's hard to run it. It's hard to run it, but it's fun. Um, person who runs a zoo is called a zookeeper. So. It's kind of a mouthful of words or, or, or syllables, but a zookeeper uh, is the person who runs a zoo. Um, and hopefully people don't start arguing about whether zoos are good or bad in the chat. <laughs> We're going to have some more controversial topics in a minute about uh, animals. When people go into the wild or the wilderness or the forest they, um, to hunt animals, it means that they go to kill them. Um, so in Canada, a lot of people like to go hunting. I personally do not hunt. I am not a hunter. I don't like to go and hunt. Um, but there are still people who like to go and hunt. They usually hunt for deer uh, or geese in Canada. So hunting is when you go into the wilderness um, to chase animals with a bow and arrow or a gun uh, for the purpose of shooting the animal. So that's probably more controversial than zoos. So um, the other thing people in Canada like to do is they like to go fishing. So fishing is when you take your fishing rod uh, and you go out to a lake, a stream, a river, uh, and you use your fishing rod to do a little bit of fishing. Um, this is less controversial for me, um, but uh, yes, you go out and you do a little bit of fishing. Some people often ask if I fish in the river by my farm, uh, and sometimes I do, um, but it's rare. I haven't done it for a number of years. Um, and here's a few idioms for you. Um, when you take the lion's share of something, it means you take almost all of it. So if there was a pizza with eight pieces, and if I ate seven pieces, I would have eaten the lion's share of the pizza. When Something seems fishy. It, it, it doesn't seem right. Like if someone, uh, someone says to you, uh, I'd like everyone to give me $10, and then in two weeks I will give you all $20. You would say, that seems fishy. That doesn't seem right. There's something weird going on here. So if you say that something seems fishy, it means there's something a little bit sketchy or funny about it. A wild goose chase. So a wild goose chase is when, um, let's say you go out for the day and you're trying to find, um, you want to go and buy a motorcycle and you drive really far to buy the motorcycle but when you get there, uh, you can't find the place that's selling it. You would call that a wild goose chase. It's when you, you do something but nothing comes of it in the end. Hopefully that made sense. You might need to look this one up. Uh, just to get a better sense uh, of what I'm talking about. And then the last one, a turkey is a really big bird. 
uh, that we eat in North America. So you have chickens and then turkeys are even bigger. But if you quit something cold turkey, it means you stop completely. Um, so you might have, uh, you might be someone who's a smoker. Okay, that's controversial too. Hopefully people in the chat aren't getting annoyed with each other. But uh, if you smoke and then you stop one day, you would say that you quit cold turkey. That's, uh, it's different than maybe you smoked five cigarettes a day and then you smoke two a day and then you smoke one a day. That's not cold turkey. But if you smoke 10 cigarettes a day and then all of a sudden one day you stop, that would be quitting cold turkey. So. Anyways, folks, I hope, I think it's great that people are talking in the chat to each other about zoos. I hope they just remember to be kind to each other when they disagree. Um, I'm Bob the Canadian. If you have not watched these videos before, um, you can subscribe by clicking uh, the red button down there if you are new here. Give me a like, everybody in the chat. That would be great. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I think we covered a lot of interesting vocabulary and uh, phrases and pronunciation about animals today. Don't forget that if you really want to practice your English, come back tomorrow and watch this video again. Um, it's always good for training your ear and, and helping you to remember uh, a lot of the words that we talked about. But it has been, thir the 30 minutes goes really quick by the way, but it has been 30 minutes. It has been super fun. I hope that you all have a great weekend. Um, if you still are like me, and you have to work today. I hope you have a good Friday. Uh, I will be doing a live stream tomorrow night from the farm again. So if you want to join in and just chat for a bit, please do come to that. Um, and I hope all of you have a great day. And I just, I love it that so many of you show up regularly. So um, don't forget, uh, I'm Bob the Canadian. I like to teach you English and I'm going to now work all day and teach a whole bunch of other things. I'm going to start by teaching some business and then I'm going to teach some French and then eventually I will go home and I might just buy a pizza so that I don't have to cook supper tonight. We'll see. Anyways, thanks again so much for watching. You guys are awesome. Have a really, really good day. I'm going to now push the button 